Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Maria. This is Andrew. Today, we're presenting about household waste characterization and diversion in New York City. So what is food waste? Uh, actually, that's a question for you. Can you give me some examples? Yeah. Yay. 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 There you go. So that shows how different, uh, different uh, food waste can be perceived. No wonder that uh, there are uh, several overlapping, somewhat similar definitions. There's a food waste, there's a, <coughs> a food loss, excess food, wasted food. Uh, definitions are sometimes depending on the agency who uses it, sometimes on the scholar. So for the purpose of this project, we uh, went with definition uh, adopted by EPA, which is uh, food waste is food that was served but not eaten including spoiled food, greens, and peels of any kind. Uh, components of the food, uh, food waste are large. It's produced on every step of the supply chain from production to, um, to consumption. And I used to think that uh, food waste is a problem of developed country, or I was wrong. Uh, food waste in low-income countries is produced early in supply chains. That's why consumers um, not really seeing it. But in high-income countries, it is um, produced later in the supply chain so that uh, there's more uh, honest on us and, as, consum as, as consumers. So the problem of food waste is so large that uh, EPA had to create a whole separate food waste recovery hierarchy just to address that problem. And usually the spotlight is on the top of this inverted triangle, but we are concentrating on diverting food waste from uh, landfills, the prevailing current method of disposal to uh, either composting or use for industrial purposes. So uh, in order to achieve our goals, we uh, performed a waste audit. It was necessary for us to um, experience this firsthand. Uh, the proper separation of food waste is essential for diversion and we needed to quantify it in order to estimate our uh, potential benefits. Uh, the scope of our project was quantification of source separated household food waste and assessment of challenges and impacts. And based on uh, our experiment, we produced um, valuable first, uh, first hand experience, uh, actionable recommendation for successful implementations of food waste separation in your own households. Uh, on the chart, Right there, you can see what was included in the scope. Uh, food waste, just like you named it, includes, um, for the purpose of the study, includes avoidable, something that was rotten before uh, it was eaten, possibly avoidable, some people eat, some don't, pizza crust uh, or uh, apple peels, and unavoidable, that's your eggshells or avocado peels. What was not in scope is further subsequent uh, quantification of each of these categories. Uh, in the literature, that topic is uh, somewhat researched. Two main uh, sources for us were the report produced by National Resource Defense Council. That's the first uh, slide, uh, first graph on your left. Um, <clears throat> they did an assessment of food waste in New York City and determined that 54%, that's the green, uh, green portion of it, is the residential food waste, so pro waste produced both uh, by every one of us in our households. Another uh, chart, which I really like, uh, is from Waste Characterization Study, which looked at the whole waste or produced by New York City and also determined that 34% of it considered uh, organic suitable for composting, which includes food waste, yard waste, and food cell paper. So the uh, current prevailing method, as Maria had said earlier, uh, for uh, disposing of food waste is uh, majority for landfill, sent to landfill. Uh, so this accounts for roughly 21 to 24% of all waste sent uh, to, you know, of all waste streams. Uh, so uh, about the equivalent of 35 million tons a year. Um, this produces methane gas. So this produces methane gas, which is uh, not fully captured um, through landfill gas capture technologies. Uh, depending on the uh, 
uh, design and, and structure of the landfill. Uh, it can range anywhere from uh, 30 all the way up to 80 percent. Um, so yeah, the idea would be to hopefully capture as much of that methane emission as possible due to it being uh, one of the more potent uh, greenhouse gases. Um, New York City does not have any landfills uh, currently, uh, so we ship a lot of our waste uh, upstate or out of state. So uh, an alternative to uh, processing uh, source separated food waste uh, is composting. Uh, composting essentially is the process through which um, we uh, combine both browns and greens, uh, so carbon rich uh, and nitrogen rich materials, along with air and water uh, through a process. Uh, we, we add uh, the air through mixing uh, the compost and, and water to allow the uh, naturally occurring microbes to break down the uh, material over time. Um, this reduces the methane released and uh, leaves you with uh, more CO2 than, than methane uh, released, which uh, has a little less um, effect on green, uh, you know, the greenhouse gases. Um, and so uh, it also, also can be used as a healthy soil amendment uh, and can store carbon longer term. The process, uh, another process through which we can uh, process, you know, uh, our food waste will be through anaerobic digestion, uh, really large quantities as well, which uh, as we know, New York City has. Uh, so everything from food scraps, bats, oils, and greases, uh, biosolids, and, and other such uh, food processing waste. Uh, currently, uh, the uh, Queens curbside uh, composting program is sending uh, food waste to uh, these um, egg-shaped egg digesters here uh, in Newtown Creek. Uh, so gas capture can be... Uh, so. Let me tell you the process real quick. Uh, microorganisms that uh, do not need, uh, they thrive in uh, without oxygen. They break down uh, the biodegradable materials and uh, produce what is known as biogas, which can be converted and cleaned to methane. Uh, so um, uh, through producing this uh, uh, natural gas rather, um, it can, it can eventually be um, put into the uh, gas pipeline infrastructure. That's the goal. Uh, and so uh, one of the other byproducts is digesting, which is a, also a usable soil amendment. Um, so it can do all this in less, fa less space uh, and with less time and less potential for smell. Uh, so a little bit about our, our experimental protocol and uh, um, the kind of uh, waste, uh, food waste uh, characterization that we did, uh, along with our waste characterization, rather. Uh, we separated all our waste into separate categories, uh, separate receptacles, um, and essentially weighed our food waste separately um, through uh, using a fish scale, as you see here, um, we were able to really quantify each and every um, uh, bag of food waste that, that we, we created. Uh, so we agreed on, you know, capturing the same uh, stream that way, you know, we could, uh, we also just, we both live in Astoria, Queens, so we both deposited it into the smart bin, um, Astoria smart bins, which are um, all accessible 24 hours. Uh, eventually, when the Queens curbside program uh, came in, uh, into effect, we uh, also got brown bins. So once October hit, we started uh, just putting them outside our door. 
So uh, once um, we, we took our measurements as we took everything out. So we kind of had the same uh, protocol. So just to speak a little bit about our uh, similarities. Um, so we followed the same protocol, slightly different, uh, or very similar family size, um, both uh, two, two adults in our house, one toddler um, under the age of three. We dine out both uh, only about one, one time a week. Uh, similar uh, work from home and commuting, one adult in both households working from home, one adult from both households um, commuting to work. Uh, slightly different dietary preferences. One adult in one of the houses had uh, been consuming a largely plant-based diet um, and vacation length over the course of the four months of collection varied between five, uh, five days and 12 days uh, respectively. And slight different setup. One family kept their um, uh, compost bin in the fridge and the other in uh, on the counter. That pretty much summarizes our protocol, similarities and differences. And uh, the table on the top uh, shows you uh, what, the month, what months we collected each family. We have four overlapping months, which are April, June, July, and October. That represents 33% of the year. And we, what we did is we compared those data sets to each other. We um, averaged them and we also contrasted them to the previous research available. You can see the set out um, for family one was in the kitchen counter. The, you know, thankfully there was a space. Uh, actually finding space was one of the difficulties that we encounter, whether it's on the counter, under the sink, near the uh, garbage can, it, it's, it's hard. Another thing is uh, what was difficult, what was challenging is to get family members on board. There was some pushback in the beginning, but once it was overcome, uh, it was relatively easy once the habit forms. Uh, another thing I should point out is that uh, storing uh, field bags in between the drop-offs um, or later on the collection, that was also something we had to keep in mind. You have to allow room for either freezer, uh, freezer space or freezer, refrigerator space. Okay, so uh, our average combined data, uh, looks like this. And I don't know if you can see well, I, I, was able, I, was, I wasn't able to see colors all that much from that side. So orange represents food waste. And if this chart reminds you something, you are not wrong because it uh, looks very similar to waste characterization study that was done in New York City in 2017. Surprisingly, we, even with the small sample size, just two families, six people total, we were able to get results which, uh, su which are supported by city data. About a third of the waste produced in our household is accounted for food waste. And another third is represented by recyclables. And a th a approximately a third is garbage. So this is the average data. And if we look at it more individually, you can see the differences. Uh, on the graph on the left, uh, orange part is much larger. It's almost twice as uh, large as uh, for family two. That's just how much food waste was produced. Uh, another thing, I don't want to bore you with too many numbers, but uh, if you look at the gray, um, light gray, that represents the amount of diapers. <laughs> Very interesting, I know. Um, so in a family one, child is much smaller, but you can see how uh, the family two, child is, um, as child grows up, the need for those, uh, in a, basically presence in the waste stream is winding down. So, so some food for thought. Uh, let's see. Let's see. So here's just a quick look at our numbers. Um, uh, total food waste per month. Um, so family one did have a considerably higher um, quantity of food waste compared to family two. Um, averaged out uh, to about 31 um, pounds per month uh, per family. Um, so yeah, over the course of a week, uh, we found that the average is about uh, 7.2 pounds.
pounds of food waste. And they're about uh, 2.4 pounds per person per week. So yeah, uh, we, we did take a median just to ensure that uh, any outliers won't be accounted for. Um, and you know, came, came relatively close to our, our average. Um, and so one, one thing we also did uh, find in our research was that uh, the, the larger the, uh, the family actually, the less food was wasted uh, per person, according to the uh, NRDC report. So yeah, we uh, took that number uh, that, we, that we found and uh, uh, through multiplying it by the population of New York uh, over the course of a year, uh, we could collectively, if, if just half of us were to uh, participate in food waste diversion, uh, we could divert up to uh, 266,000 tons uh, of food waste uh, to be used for beneficial use. Yeah, quarter million tons. That's a lot, I think. So how do we get there? Uh, but first, we cannot uh, not mention the Queen's Carpstead Organics. When we started this project, we had no idea how, um, I guess, lucky we will be to have this case study reference. For those of you who don't know, um, starting October 1st, uh, 3rd, uh, 2022, all Queen's residents, any Queen's residents here, by the way? Yes, no? No? Okay. <laughs> Oops. Um, starting October 3rd, there was a, um, all Queens residents are eligible for uh, weekly free pickups of their food waste. That includes uh, leaf, yard waste, and food salt paper. In the first six weeks, as reported by city officials, 2,850 tons were collected. That includes all these items that I need. However, it is still a fraction. Just for reference, within the same period of time, in the same borough of Queens, 72,302 tons of refuse was collected. So there's uh, lots of room for growth. Um, as much as we love that program and we benefited from it, uh, we cannot uh, not mention uh, some shortcomings. So first is that the program will be paused for winter months and breaking that habit will not uh, help with uh, participation rates back in the spring. That's number one. Another thing is that we would recommend to keep distributing brown bins. Brown bins is what we had on the previous slide. They create this uniform, visible, uh, normalizing food waste separation, just like recycling is norm. So food separation should be too, and those bins should help. And lastly, uh, we think that cities should invest in distributing or even installing kitchen containers uh, to, um, exp um, to increase the participation rates to make people do it just because it's so easy to do and it's easy not to do, uh, difficult not to do it. So yes, that's, uh, when we were looking into this, uh, we realized that it's actually, there's no correlation between how well people are aware of the benefits, but rather how easy it is to do. So we came up with this actionable recommendations for you and please uh, scan this QR code <laughs> so that you can get those um, um, actionable recommendations on your phone and you can follow all the links we you know combined for you. So one of the most difficult choices and probably that's the only choice you have to do this in, whole th in this whole um, process, you'd have to choose how do you want to separate your organics, whether it's through municipal composting, whether it's bringing to one of the 200 drop-off sites throughout New York, that's the map on the left, or starting your backyard composting if you're lucky to have backyard in New York. Or maybe you wanna pay someone, uh, pay micro hauler to come and pick up your waste. Or if you're passionate, if we um, change your mind about uh, food waste today, then maybe you wanna even host a drop-off site. So once you do that, uh, depending on the uh, program, how you will be participating, um, determine what items needs to be collected because there are differences between those programs. We even suggest printing out the list of the items for collection and placing it either on the container or right next to it. Decide where you will place the container. That's crucial. Try to place it as uh, closer to a kitchen sink or garbage can. So again, convenience is everything. 
And once you do that, you can enjoy the benefits of your food waste being processed for beneficial use and not being sent to landfills. And we want to thank you, our advisor, Marco Castaldi. Thank you so much. And we are open for questions. Thank you. Yes.